All right, hello everyone. My name is Maggie Gill. I'm the CEO of the Palm Beach Health Network. I'm joined by Julia Boddy, nurse practitioner at Delray Medical Center, and this is episode five of Getting Candid on COVID. So we've been asking you over the past several weeks, what questions do you have? And our goal is not only to ask the questions, but to act on the concerns. And so for this episode, we want to focus on our top five. What are the top five issues that we've heard and what have we done about them? So you've all asked about um, personal protective equipment, so our PPE. So where are we with that? So as we've acknowledged, there's been a lot of changes over guidance and recommendations about PPE over the past several weeks because it's been a very changeable and dynamic situation. We continue to follow CDC guidelines, and this week we published a detailed FAQ and reference documents that went to all employees, all medical staff, our board members, and community members. We want to make sure that we've answered your questions on PPE, and we'll continue to update those type of reference documents as things change. Another question you all asked is about our COVID-19 testing. So how are we with that? Yes. There's concerns at the beginning of this period where we had delays in testing or there was not enough testing. And I'm, I'm happy to say that the situation is improving. So we have additional access to testing. The turnaround times are faster. Uh, we're continuing to work on that and we expect it to get even better. And so our goal is, is when we have someone who needs to be tested that we can find out as quickly as possible uh, whether it's positive or not. And that would apply to our patients as well as our staff and caregivers. So we we'll continue to work on that, but we're, we've made good progress, especially this week. Okay, and what about the new recommendations? That was another question about wearing masks, what is appropriate um, in terms of um, what everybody should be doing. Yes, so there's been a lot in the media this week about masking. We decided to go ahead and expand our guidance locally, asking that anyone who cares for a patient, encounters a patient, or screens wear a mask. And that means that you should wear an official mask, meaning that one that we issue you to make sure that it meets all approved um, uh, you know, criteria and is safe. And if you work in a place where you're not meeting with patients or you're in an office, um, you can feel free to wear a homemade or donated mask. I'm so happy to introduce Dr. Catala. He's one of our infectious disease specialists here at Delray Medical Center. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Um, number one is we've asked all employees um, that have any type of patient contact, um, anything to do with patient care, we've asked for everybody to wearing a surgical mask here. So tell us why that's important. So the surgical mask uh, will protect everyone that is surrounding you and the patients from those particles coming out of your mouth and of your nose, from your nose. So you will have a barrier that will not allow those droplets to come out. Okay. And you can be certain that your patients will be more protected from getting any type of uh, airborne or droplet uh, infectious process. Okay, great. And that also protects us um, in terms of um, working with a colleague, things like that, that it also protects anybody else around you. Is that correct? Sure. Great. So we've had a lot of um, people in the community who donated um, homemade masks to us. Yep. Um, and uh, so tell us the difference between that and a surgical mask and how we would use that. So I think the most important thing is to thank uh, everyone out there that is helping, contributing, and just letting us know that we're not alone. And the only caveat that I have seen with homemade donated masks is that as healthcare provider, we don't know how much of the particles coming out of our nose on, or oral cavity are going to be cross that barrier, and we're going to be people surrounding us can be more prone to be infected or sick. Now, with the N95 of facial surgical mask, we know that there is a filter that those particles are not coming out. So I think that even though it's a great gesture and I think it's really nice, we should always, if we're gonna use a homemade mask, we should always have another protective barrier that will help us and we, are no, we know and we're sure that surround, people surrounding us and our patients are gonna be okay and there's less possibility of getting infected.
Another question we get from the community, great outpouring from everybody to um, people that work here. What about donations? How, does, how, how can somebody do that if they want to? Yes, we have gotten so much outpouring from the community to support in terms of food and supplies and, and it's just, it's incredible. So we established an email address that you can send your um, requested donations or your ideas and we will go through them. We will coordinate any food donations and we will vet any supply donations. Make it easier for everyone to help out. And the fifth question is about staffing um, in terms of um, utilizing facility staffing, surge plans. That was a big question. As well. Yes. So obviously there's a lot of information around how are we responding at a facility level for patients, for COVID-19 units, um, for our facility plans, for our group plans. So we've put some additional tools that are accessible to our leaders. Um, we established a SharePoint site for the group incident command as well as for the facilities. And so leaders are encouraged to go out there, get the information, share it with your staff, round, talk. And so we're really encouraging and promoting sharing of information, transfer of knowledge, and getting the, putting the tools out there in a ready to use and easily accessible format. Well, I think that there'll be more questions as time goes on, Julie, and certainly, um, you know, we're not there, right? So we are still weeks away from what is projected to be our peak period. So we'll continue to respond, to think proactively, to seek your um, questions out, um, to respond to your concerns, and to, you know, be transparent as we um, manage through this difficult time. And again, want to say thank you to everyone, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's pulled together, done a great job. Thank you, team. Keep doing what you're doing, and we're all in this together. Mm -hmm.